Morning all. Right, busy day ahead. I'm going to plant out seedlings, which are sowed on the 15th of February. I'm going to take dahlia cuttings and I've got masses of flowers to cut because I've got a load going out and a demo to do for a live on Instagram tomorrow in aid of raising money for um, Ukrainian refugees. So let's get on. It's eight o'clock in the morning. Ah, let's go. By the way, do um, if you if you enjoy these clips and what we do. The rattle, by the way, is my trolley, which goes along everywhere with me. Anyway, if you enjoy these clips, do subscribe to the channel and you can press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got new clips coming along. I'm just going past Granny's house here on the left. Granny lives in the old tractor shed, uh, although it doesn't look so tractor sheddy anymore. Um, anyway, do subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got new clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks are helpful along the way, then you can always buy me a coffee and the link is in all the blurbs. Here we are, very high tech. As you can see, the uh, security here, this is not security against people, obviously, but against deer and rabbits. So these are the first trays of seedlings ready to plant out, sown on the 15th of February. I sowed 20 trays of seedlings then. They've all survived. Obviously I haven't got 20 here, but these are the ones that are ready to go. We have had a heavy frost recently and I did lose my Cobia scandon seedlings, which is very sad, but luckily I have more seeds. So I'm going to sow them again. There's plenty of time. These seedlings have all been hardening off for um, a week or more. There were a couple of nights of frost. We covered them up, but actually they're fine. And there's no frost forecast for the next week or more. So I'm gonna plant them out. If there is a frost, I might fling a bit of fleece over them. I'll sort of see how I feel. <laughs> but they've had plenty of hardening off time here. It's really important that you harden your seedlings off before you plant them out because otherwise they'll just sort of, they won't even like the wind. They'll, they'll sort of fuss and complain. Look, as usual, my <laughs> I'm having to get down, get down with the nettles. So I just lay the plants trays out where they're going to go. This is the patch where I grow most of my annuals. You can see at the other end, there are the tulips and there are lots of biennials which are going to flower. Some of those will be left in the ground, some will be lifted, broad tulips. And so I'm just laying all the trays out. Each tray full will take about a meter square of space. And there are the crab apples just coming into flower. I'll show you. One of the things it's really worth learning how to do as a flower farmer is how to <laughs> reverse around a corner with a trolley very efficiently. Look at that. Out through these gates and back to the tunnels. And here comes the crabapple blossom. How beautiful is that? So here's a tray of about 30 Ami Visnaga and 30 Ami Majors. They're in about nine inches apart, which is slightly wider than my hand span. And it is really, really important that even if it's going to rain, they're watered in because you don't want, if there are air pockets in the ground, you don't want them the roots to dry out. They really don't like being moved around. If it were a very sunny day, I would shade them. I possibly wouldn't be planting them out if it were a very funny, sunny day. Um, and if I were mulching the ground before planting them, or sort of at the same time, I would net them because the birds will come and dig them up, not maliciously, but just out of interest to see what's in the earth. Um, but because the ground has been mulched over winter, I've just popped them in and I'll keep an eye. If I find one being dug up, 
I'll have to have words. <laughs> right, more water. I'm very sorry about the extremely dirty hair, but I had a small operation on my ears and I'm not allowed to wash my hair for two weeks. So we're a week in. Mm. It feels as though I'm wearing a kind of scratchy helmet. Very attractive. Right, so this is typical farmer florist stuff. This is how I should not work. I suddenly realise it is Ash Wednesday, which means that tomorrow is Maundy Thursday, which means that I can't send flowers tomorrow to be delivered on Friday because Good Friday in the UK is a bank holiday. So suddenly I have to stop planting out my seedlings and cut flowers for sending out today rather than tomorrow. So the first thing I do, but I've got to cut all the flowers I need for today and tomorrow because otherwise you're double handling and you're doing everything twice and you're walking around three times as much and the skill in this job is to walk less, not more, because then you have more time. So, I first thing I do is count the stems. 50, 100, 75, 75, 50. That's the size of the arrangements and the number of stems per arrangement I need. Then I add them up, 5, 14, 19, 24, 25. So it's 350 stem cut and ballparking it, it's going to be a third filler, third foliage, third accent flowers. So it's 100 tulips, ballpark, uh, 100 filler and 100 foliage. Let's go. The speed at which I, had, I would not have to work if I were more organized, just <laughs> these blown white tulips are for the demo a they're blown so i'm not going to sell them to anybody b they're sort of exploded out so they'll look great but c white tulips in a demo against foliage being done inside will show up better than a darker color Top tip, if you're harvesting tulips, dig them up and you'll get much more stem length. There you go. Whatever I'm cutting, I always cut 50 stems to a bucket because then I know how many I've got. Right, it's 10 past one. I've cut in the end 400 stems because you know, a little extra always comes in handy. And uh, I've also driven a child to play with his friend, which sounds like he's four, but he's not, he's 15. Anyway, that took an hour. Um, so I better get on because the couriers will be picking these up in a minute and I haven't even made the bouquets. Right, so there are two bouquets. Ooh, nice blue bin. Uh, and they are ready for packing up and collecting by the courier. I have to say, while making up the boxes, I have to say I'm very glad that I have, by completely, by chance, I gave up most of my flower delivery business last year. It is a tough time to be paying couriers, paying packaging, paying cardboard and the price of oil has gone up the price of cardboard the price of any kind of uh, uh, imported or fabricated by somebody else goods have gone through the roof so please if you are a buyer of flowers do not be surprised if flowers you want to send to somebody are the same size but possibly 10 or even 15 pounds more per bouquet to send because the flowers will have cost the florist more and all of this bit is costing a great deal more and the courier cost for delivery, especially if it's a fragile or liquid service for your precious flowers, which it should be to look after the flowers, will be possibly twice what it was a year ago. Um, for which reason you might consider looking for a local grower or florists using locally grown flowers. Not that I have an agenda I'm pushing at all. Anyway, better get on or the courier will arrive and I won't be ready. So here we are. I've been, um, I made a start. Little 
These are Café Le Royale, which you can see by the labeling, the five star labeling. So what I'm doing is take my sharp new knife. I lose one of these every year, so I have to go get a new one. And I have just been to the garden center to buy a new knife. I am going to rootle around until I can find, you see, I've got a cutting here, nice shoot. And I'm going to cut it off the original stem with a tiny little bit of tuba with it. Very, really, really simple. You kind of saw into it. And you can feel it loosening up. These are great knives because they've got a hook so you can uh, get underneath. For all kind of basil cuttings, I think this is the, the knife of choice. Right, look. I show you. Oh, it's perfect. Look at this. Here's my very untidy studio. Oh, my very dirty car. Um, tiny little bit of last year tuba. You can even see a little bit of root here. Oh, it's exciting times. So I'm going to tidy this up. I'm going to take off these side leaves. Clip. Clip. I'm going to take out this shoot because I don't want it to put its energy into growing up. Compost. I want it to put its energy into growing roots down. Tiny little bit of the tuber. This is Aljo, A-L-J-O, one of my absolute favorites. And I'm gonna slip it into the corner of this pot. Why do cuttings like to grow against the corner? I don't know, but they do. I have a theory that being against the corner, it forces the roots down. So you get a really good, strong root, root growth. Um, but that is not at all a scientific answer. These leaves are quite big, so they might get a bit wilty. So I'm going to cut half of them off. Can you see? <laughs> it's worth making. Here they are. I'm going to take just the end off each one because now it can still photosynthesize but there's less leaf to transpire from, so it's less likely to die. And there, I put it into um, really good quality peat-free silver grow compost, which I have into which I have not mixed sand, grit, or vermiculite. Uh, but because I have faith, it's all going to work. <laughs> um, I won't overwater. I will water from underneath. And that, my friends, is that. Right, the reason I'm in such a rush is because I have to go and fetch a child from their friend's house, having already taken them there. But I wanted to show you, come with me. Oh, look, I can move you around. This is really hilarious. Right, you see all these flower frogs here? They are um, a lend from my friend Nathan at Floral Fabrications, worth looking him up. He makes brilliant mechanics for floral foam free floristry. So he's lent me three frogs like this. And I thought, well, why not do a demo, a live demo on Instagram, and we might raise a bit of money for um, poor old Ukrainian refugees. So um, any money I raise tomorrow through Buy Me A Coffee, I'm going to ask people to label their donations just Ukraine then I will send off to UNICEF Ukraine to help with refugees um, and the demo is going to be at five o'clock British summertime on the 14th of April and some of those big white tulips we were cutting earlier will be part of it anyway thanks very much for joining me today please do subscribe to the channel press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got new clips coming up and if any of the tips and tricks i've given you today have been useful then please do buy me a coffee 
the link for buying a coffee is in all the blurbs for all my clips. Um, and if you want to donate for Ukraine, then buy me a coffee and you just put in the comment Ukraine. That'd be great. I'll see you at the live on Instagram where I'm common farm flowers tomorrow, five o'clock British summertime. Right, let's get on. <laughs> We've got so much to do. <laughs>